Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this series on how we can create a GUI to interface with our Arduino. In this video we're going to create a menu. This menu enables us to add more features to our GUI. We're going to start with the basics and be able to control the on and off and blink mode as well as closing the window and then printing a message to the shell. You see here we have in the menu box, file and settings. We'll learn how we can create the two different menus for file and settings and how we can begin to build upon functionality of these selections. One thing to note is that depending on your operating system, you're going to get a little bit different of a look and feel. For example, in the Mac OS, the menu bar is always at the top of the screen, detached from the TK Enter window. In the Windows, it's actually embedded into the window. Let's go ahead and look at the Python code so we can see how we can add these drop-down menus. We can conceptually think of these menus as being containers that have sub-containers within them. So the first container we need to create is the menu bar. And we do that by assigning it to menu and root. We do that by assigning it menu and passing it the parameter root. We can see up top, this is where our containers containing the file and setting menus will be. We'll first focus on the file menu. To create the file menu in line 89, we're going to assign file menu to menu and then we're going to pass it the first parameter of menu bar, which is that main container, the first one we created. And we're going to assign it tear off equals zero. What this means is that this menu will not be removable. It'll stay in place. So the user can't detach it and move it around the screen. It'll be anchored to the menu bar. So this is the initialization of the container that will then contain the file label and then the sub elements within it. So to actually add the cascade or the options in the display labels, we need to do menu bar dot add cascade. So this is the container that's going to hold the options within the file menu. So the add cascade method takes in two arguments here. First is the title of the menu and then we need to assign that menu and we do that by doing menu equals file menu. Ultimately we want each of these options within this menu to add functionality. And what that means in the back end in TK Enter is we need a label that's going to signify the user that once they press something, they're going to have a resulting action out of it. So to implement this, let's take a look at line 91. We have file menu dot add command, and it takes in two arguments here. The label, which is save, and then we have a second argument, command equals menu save. Command equals menu save is calling a function by reference. It doesn't take any input parameters, but simply points to menu save. For the moment, we won't go into all the details about passing by reference and how we can work around that, but just note that we can't pass menu save any options implementing the command this way. To get the basics, we're simply going to alert ourselves that the button was pressed by printing selected save to the shell. We'll actually enable the user to save the options in a future video, but for now, this will just indicate to us as a placeholder that the user selected save. Next, let's move to line 92. Now we're going to add some functionality to enable the user to close the Blink GUI. We do it by going file menu dot add command, assigning label to exit, and then command to exit GUI. So exit GUI is going to be our custom function that will enable us to close the window. In this case, it's a simple one-liner, root dot destroy. This destroy method is built into TK Enter and allows us to simply close the window. Notice that the order of the menu is sequential to how we program it. 
So line 91 is save and line 92 is exit. So therefore, save will be populated before exit. Let's move on to our next menu, which will include a cascade of new functionality, and that's going to be labeled settings. So in line 94, we assign settings to menu, and the arguments are menu bar and tear off equals zero. Notice the similarity between file menu in line 89 and settings in line 94. This is because they're both being placed in the same container, so to speak but they have a different name, so they are unique containers. We then want to add functionality like we did previously. So we want to go menu bar dot add cascade, label equals settings, and menu equals settings. This is the same premise as above with this new container. Let's go ahead and add commands to this cascaded settings menu. We're going to add three commands corresponding to labels for this cascaded menu. Let's first start with the one up top in that settings menu for blink. We go to line 96. It's settings dot add command and the arguments here are label equals blink and command equals menu blink enable. So the purpose of this will be to set the blink mode so that will initiate blinking if it's not already checked, and if it is checked, it'll still do the same. And if you look at the snippet of code, which is where these functions are actually defined at the bottom left here of the screen, we can see the definition of menu blink enable. I first get the blink statement in blink state dot get. If it's not equals to one, that means that the blink box was not checked when the user selected it from the menu. So blink state dot set sets that checkbox. So if the user selects from the settings menu blink, we want to set the blink checkbox automatically and then call blink LED, which is the function we've created in previous videos and used in previous videos to blink the LED. Let's move to the next option in this drop down menu, turn on. This is defined in line 97. It's defined by settings dot add command with the arguments label equals turn on and command equals menu turn on. If we look at lines 43 through 46, we can see how this turn on function is implemented. We see the definition menu turn on. The first line of this function line 44 says if blink state dot get is equal to one, then set blink state to zero. So if it's true, if the box is checked, we need to go ahead and uncheck the box. So this is done automatically through this check. So if the blink box is already not checked, it'll remain unchecked. And if it is checked, we go ahead and set it to zero. After we confirm that this blink checkbox is not selected, we go ahead and write the Arduino, the lowercase o. And recall that this turns the LED on. We have a corresponding turn off command in line 98. That's settings.add command with the arguments label equals turn off and command equals menu turn off. Similar to the turn on, we implement the turn off, but we want the opposite functionality. So let's take a look at lines 48 through 51. The first line checks the state of the blink checkbox. If it's true, or if it's asserted, then we want to go ahead and uncheck that box by setting blink state to zero. Then, once we've confirmed that the blink checkbox is not asserted, we do a serial write with the lowercase x. And again, recall that the Arduino is looking for the x to turn off the LED. The last thing we need to do to get this code up and running is to add in line 100 which is root.config taking in the input parameter menu equals menu bar. This adds this menu bar to the root object and allows us to access it while the TK enter window is running. So thank you for watching this video and I've hoped you learn more about how you can make file menus 
or custom menus in order to add functionality to your GUI. I'll have a follow-up video to add some more functionality to the menu that we just created. So thank you for watching and let me know what you think in the comments section.